I am Jerome Tiloxing from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. The following is a documentary on International Men's Day. Various persons have been interviewed from different age groups and occupations from Trinidad and Tobago and they will be expressing their viewpoints on masculinity and gender relations. This year, more than 72 countries will be observing International Men's Day. I am grateful to all the coordinators and other persons who have been organizing and promoting International Men's Day for the past 15 years. I hope that other countries, other persons and other groups will continue to observe International Men's Day to promote positive role models, to remove discrimination among our men and to improve gender relations. I'm also hoping that boys, teenagers and young men will know that this day is to improve themselves. It is a day not just for our men but it is for everyone to promote upright, outstanding men, good family values and we are also for the past few years having International Men's Day observances in prisons. So even those men and women who might feel marginalized and neglected, they are welcome to be part of International Men's Day. I thank you. What are some solutions to problems facing teenagers such as bullying and peer pressure? Well, I mean, from my observation in the last 18 years of teaching, um, bullying sends from a lot of anger. Um, a lot of the times we have a lot of boys who tend to anger, they have a lot of frustrations and they have no release. And sometimes they look at the vulnerable boys and they attack them. Um, they see difference as something that is strange to them or something to, to, to attack because they don't understand it themselves. So that we have a lot of um, non-communication. So I think a lot of communication that sends from the parents. I think when you talk to boys who have been, who've been doing the bullying, they have no communication with their parents. They have a lot of issues and they come to school and they take it out on other boys. So I think one of those major solutions are parents need to start talking to their children more. Um, we, start, we have to treat each other as human beings because a lot of the time we, we don't have respect for the other individuals in the classes and the boys don't see respect for personal space as important. So you have a lot of those things that would, if parents would intervene, teachers too, if teachers would intervene and say, listen, these boys are good boys and not bad boys, and that you know you treat them like students and not like monsters as they always say. So you have to have that going on. So the boys feel that they are good, especially those that are bullying, because they feel that I'm bad, I have to represent the badness, and I have to beat up others. So you have those issues. Um, but most of the times, like I'm, I'm a dean as well, so that when you deal with these boys, all you need is somebody to listen to them. And when they, they realize that you are paying attention to them, they start to see a difference. Uh, another thing is, um, you see when you put them in a position of leadership roles, you start to see a change. And they stop bullying and actually they start to be a mentor in a lot of respects. So I, I would say those are main areas. In my opinion, the, the, the first thing is that Teenagers need to have an awareness of what International Men's Day is, um, what are the various goals of the committee, and the reasons for the birth of International Men's Day. So, for example, um, one of the key goals you will have is tackling tolerance of violence against men and boys. So that um, first, I think that the, the awareness of the, of the event of the day has to grow within Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the region, and then. Um, as part of the activities leading up to and with NDD, we can look at maybe looking at some of the root causes of, of violence in schools, um, root causes of bullying, root causes of, of child abuse, abuse specifically against men and boys, um, particularly sexual abuse, which is something that I, I often in, encounter working in, in high risk communities here in Trinidad. So that um, 
step one awareness once people know and uh, young men in particular have an idea that hey look they have something for us because that is that is something that um, you don't see and you often hear men and boys and teenagers complaining about it from everything to why ladies only free any parties to how come mothers day but bigger than fathers day to everything is everything is everything is woman these are the things that I get and to some degree experience all right so I think that's my thing do you feel international men's day has been successful in creating less violent males a less violent society um to me not yet not yet um again it, it comes back to my first point of awareness um but i don't think that adults or men in general have taken a grip on our own concepts of violence and uh, our re relationship that we have definitely in trinidad and, and the caribbean again between violence and our own masculinity right so for example i'm a, I'm a big guy just the, the, the way I look and the stereotypes that I fit into, you would expect that within every conflict I'm expected to react violently. You understand? So even me knowing that if there's a potential for conflict, especially when there are women present, I have to always make sure to put people at ease in my own anger. Alright? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um I don't think as yet that international men's day has, has gotten to that point. I think that um the discussion remains open and we have a lot of work to do to recognize, to, to, to get men, teenagers, and our, our youth or young boys to realize that anger doesn't necessarily mean violence, because that's what it is now. Right? If you oppose me, I'm supposed to lick you down. <laughs> All right? and, and again, it's because I work, I work at Indonesia National Security, I work in high-risk communities. So, now, what do you know about this concept of the macho man, you know, the macho male? you feel that macho man is Created problems in Trinidad um, and the Caribbean. What, what, I, what, what are some of the terms that come to your mind when you hear Trinidad and I think it's a worldwide phenomenon. I would uh, pigeonhole it to the to Trinidad or to the Caribbean. Right. But my understanding of it is as you do the history, do the research behind it, it really is much of a corruption or tainting of the word machismo. And that is really. Um, used to describe somebody, a male, who was basically all encompassed and then so this is like uh, the father figure, the protector, the provider, etc. And over the course of the years, um, people have erroneously took it to believe that it is where you are, if you want to use for um, what young people say nowadays, um, a kind of player type role or or a man or somebody who who swaggerific according to um, <laughs> according to popular term being used nowadays. And they in a sense they lose the true meaning of what it's supposed to be. And I, those things happen from time to time, not only with that with different things as well, but sticking to the point. Um, for me that what it's supposed to be as and where it came from, so much that it's now it has been lost. Um, people now they see it as you know well um, you have to look a certain lifestyle, you have to look a certain way, you have to dress a certain way. Um, for you to fit that that moment to be a to be a much more one and it's actually the original meaning of it is the exact opposite. It's supposed to be the uh, humble, respectful to women especially. Um, and you're supposed to love and cherish your family. And what it is nowadays is, like I said, almost the example of so. How do you feel men could make a positive contribution to society? How do you feel men could become positive role models, men and boys? Okay, um, I'll do it. Men first. Um, for men, I think that individually and collectively we have to work at changing the general conceptualization of what a man is. You understand? So that now I'm in an environment where um, my son is two years old. I'm the parent who carries him to daycare every day and picks him up in the afternoon. You understand? So I'm the parent his his um what they call them aunties in the school interact with. So I'm the parent they're most familiar with and they're gonna call me. Alright? We have and I'm not a I'm not 
by myself and other isolated examples, we have men, number one, who wish to be involved in their family life. And because of the various perceptions that exist within our society, at times they are being denied that deliberately. All right? Um, so that we had that issue at San Fernando General with me not being able to see my son. I did today go to tell her father still can spend the night with his child if the child is sick. Even if the mother can't be there either. All right? Um, we have the case cases that the Single Fathers Association of Trinidad and Tobago are fighting against, which is for men to have an equal chance of getting equal custody of, of their children. Right now the situation is that regardless of the financial, economic, emotional situation, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't seem to matter whether the court appointed social worker recommends joint custody or sole custody for the for the man. It seems that the majority of cases grant custody to the to the to the, to the mother. Right. Regardless of the situation, and this might be something global, right? It actually is something global in the sense that um, Single Fathers Association have linked with similar organizations in Britain and Australia and in other parts of the Caribbean that are experiencing a similar challenge, right? Um, but in general, what I'm getting to is that if men change the way they are viewed, the way we are viewed, the, 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 the types of rural mothers we make, because um, right now in, 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 in the communities that I work in and with my program at the Ministry of National Security, you see one type of male role model, which is the violent gang leader or the drug pusher, right? And the reason they have the ascendancy is that the father is not in the home for whatever reason. He might be dead, he might be in jail, or in some cases he might be forced out where the mother just, the relationship is finished and again we come back to the custody issue. Yeah. So, there's a negative male stereotype that is out there, but it's still the standard that is a man. So a man means how much jewelry you have, how much gold you have, how much money you can belt around. All right, and we need to change that. All right, in terms of boys and teenagers and, and younger men, if we are able to change what they see men doing, we in these schools. The boy who actually likes to pick up a book and read will get beat up. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. You understand? The nerd. You do know, like my experience, I'm a dude, but I could also fight. <laughs> so we learned very early not to, not to do that with me. Right. But so that you, the dude now could have a little chance to, to read his books in the school right. without somebody sitting in my club lunchtime. Right, right. You understand? If it is the boys, the teenagers see a different type of behavior mm. than the ascendancy of, of violence. What you would bring up for want of, of, of better academic language right now. Yeah. Um, then, then we can look at that change in behavior. And these things are exacerbated by what they see in the, in the video games and on BT and MTV and Correct. Synergy. Correct. You understand? So that uh, that change has to start with the, with the men. And eventually, because that type of mental change is going to take years, eventually we, we may start to see a different level of behavior. But also, more men in communities, because if it's not the only family, it has to come from the communities. You need to try to take more responsibility for, it, for the fellas on, on their block, on their street. You understand? And it does exist in isolated parts, but we need it on a much larger scale to, to, to stem the, the, the tide of violence that leads to our crime rate and so So Marcus, tell me about your work in the rape crisis society. Well, for the last two years I've been the director, one of the directors out of nine, um, the youngest, and one of the males, when you have two males sitting on the board, um, uh, we work with the actual clients, the victims of rape and sexual trauma. So we also do some advocacy and um, public education as it, as it relates to rape and domestic violence. Now, recently in India there was an incident of a woman being gang raped in public during the daylight in a bus and what are your views on that and how do you feel men around the world could do something to prevent this how could men um, make a statement against this atrocity well to one men play a major role we we look at these issues as women issues because um dominate dominantly it's women who are affected correct so you know we tell ourselves that women should be the one working on that, but no. If men take a stance on these things um, from from parenting right, right. 
it's well, it's from the individual. The man understands himself and, and becomes comfortable with himself and learns value systems. Yeah. Uh, that's one step. That's very, very core. Then we take we think about it in the in, so, in society where men play a role as fathers, as brothers, as as grandfathers. They have to they have to be now educated for other men. That's another role that men play. And as well, men need to play a role in policy making. If men stand up and say that we need a gender policy or we need more policies to prevent sexual harassment in the workplace or um, to work with sexual predators and sexual violence, the, the, the actual policy makers will see that, oh, this is not just a woman issue, but this is a humankind issue because both men and women are fighting for something that is not gender specific. Yeah. Um, secondly, in our field of work, we also like to tell people that men are affected by um, sexual crimes. We have young boys who are affected and they grow up with childhood trauma. They are big men who grow up with childhood trauma. I always say that. Um, if you look at the culture of India, where they are blaming the woman for the rape because of the way she was dressed, um, that definitely can't happen in Trinidad because all women are very, very free and liberal. And our men promote that. Right? It's just a little more respect needs to be um, is to be considered when working with women. How can young men at secondary schools and colleges make a positive contribution to society? Okay. Um, now we've tried some stuff at school and I've seen it working a bit where you take boys who have low self-esteem and they you, you put them you, you enhance their skills. So you, you, you take them under your wing um, and you, you really let them develop that area and they start to get better self-esteem and then also use them as role models for the boys and then they realize that hey I can do something with this so that, that they, they become leaders in the school and leaders in the area and actually they, they, when they leave um, school they become a lot more, they come back and give talks to the boys in school about their success stories and that does help with the other generations coming up that hey I could be like this boy or I could be like this student, so that that helps in a lot of ways. I, I think it does work, in, uh, and we've had even when they become adults and their families, and, and they come back and talk to the boys about their school life, about their, their success at, you know, where, where they were at. I was a, a bully, I was a bad boy, I did badly in exams, and I come back, hey, I can do it if you can do it. And if you have people who help you, motivate you, that, that works. What are some of the positive contributions men in Trent de Bego are making to our society? Um, one such individual that I know of is the producer, Mr. Mastan of Ahar. Having fallen said from time to time on the production team, I can see the great lengths that he goes to in order to source uh, various product samples, sponsorship from organizations, from businesses that have a positive and lasting impact on families across Trinidad and Tobago with their um, with their sponsorship deals that he's able to uh, that he's able to get. He has been doing this for a few years? He's been, he's been doing this for uh, about fifteen years. Okay. In terms of him personally and uh, before that he his father was the one who started it. Um, he took over after his father's passing and he has continued to show it's one of the longest running talent shows. And it has really helped to shape a lot of the individuals who have partially the show, be it on the children's um, segment of the show, that is children's of, children of Mustafa, or the adult show, well, the actual Mustafa Bahar itself. So in my mind, he would be an ideal candidate for, um, for that recognition. No. How do you feel International Men's Day could create a better society and better male role models? I know you have been involved for two years, last two years International Men's Day. How do you feel they could make a better impact? Well, one thing I've noticed with International Men's Day is that it's a big support system for men. Um, last year and this year, I've noticed by working alongside some of the, 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 the male organizations, um, Men Against Violence Against Women, the Singapore Association. Um, for one, we need to start supporting our fellow men. 
many start supporting our fellow men because I remember the first meeting that we had, rather than getting down into the actual work, we were dealing with personal issues, yeah. right? And coming from that, I have learned that not only women are really victimized by the system, and when I say by the system, I mean the protective service, the legal service, men as well, right? Because here it is, we see women, okay, she's been, she's been abused, right? Then she goes into the police station and she has to make a report and because of the nature of questions, she's re-victimized. Then she goes into a courtroom where she is, she's cross-examined, so she's also re-victimized again. But men also are victims of the system, whereby, because a minority group of men cause, give all men a bad name, right? It's only a minority that does, this, that does the crime, quote unquote. And all men are, uh, tabooed because of that. So you have innocent men who wives file for divorce and he does not get custody because of what other men has laid for to. You understand? So you have innocent men who want to see their children and because the system, because the statistics show that men are not designed or prepared or the majority that come forward are, are, are not capable. All men are now classed as that. Now finally, I want you to tell me how you feel Carrie Man has been positively impacting on men in the Caribbean. I know you have been involved. Mm -hmm. And also what you envision for Carrie Man TT. I know you also want to plan a local branch down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Carrie Man, which is a Caribbean male action network, is just that in, in, in each island in the Caribbean, you see different individuals and groups taking part in various initiatives geared towards number one improving that gender relationship between us men and the women and um, what I mean I've only been involved since last year right maybe uh, just a few months but what what I've seen from listening to those who've been involved for a, pre uh, a period of years is that growing understanding that here what men and women we're really different yeah. we're really not on the same page and maybe if we try to understand each other a little bit more, we wouldn't have so much confusion right. and so much conflict. Right. All right? So that you see um, from the different kind of agencies, the Bahamas Crisis Center in Bahamas, for example, starting to hold that discussion with, with young men separately, young women separately, bring them together. Um, in Dominica, we have um, uh, actual political project going on right now, get towards understanding why the man is not allowed to, 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 to be in the home. Right? Um, and we have various other initiatives taking place throughout the Caribbean. Um, one of the best things I saw, and it is on the Kind Man website right now, is the series of videos called Building a Pen. And that seeks to uh, highlight the, the current status of the gender relationship between men and women along issues of um, what the Bible says, pornography, um, violence in the home and abuse and so on. And it shows you how negative things are, but it also shows you where there's hope to change some of these behaviors. Right? So um, over a period of time, you see that Karen Man has, has, has had some success in taking isolated individual cases and bringing it together for that type of learning. And so that if we learn from each other, then we can try it. Work in Dominica, maybe it could work in Trinidad, Puerto Rico. Right. Might work back in Jamaica, depending on our our on our space. All right. Um, in terms of local Cayman, um, well, Cayman itself is actually registered as an NGO in Trinidad and Tobago. But what we have in Trinidad and Tobago, we're trying to get Reman off the ground. And um, one of the main things that Reman wants to focus on is to assist the Single Fathers Association with that custody battle issue in Trinidad and Tobago. And secondly, we're also looking at having some kind of impact on the gender policy, which for some reason still remains a secret. Um, but to my mind, in, in terms of the issues that affect men, while, it, while it, it purports to promote equality between men and women, there can be no equality if something like um, maternity leave is still three months, which is too little bit. But paternity leave is three days, which is just, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's a big thing in all the countries. Eh? You understand? Right. And 
and um, arguments against it, for example, state that well, what the men going to do, stay on scratch, stay on play PS3, these are the things I've had to respond to on, on social media forum and in person. Um, but then if you use things, yeah, yeah, yeah that really happened. <laughs> but then if you use things like my example, my wife almost died giving boots. Right? She needed me for more than three boot days. You understand? So that we, we, in general, women need to understand that there are going to be legitimate cases where men are going to need these things. And then also in Trinidad, if we could actually enforce these policies properly, then you wouldn't have abuse, which is a legitimate concern if, if a man has five children at the same time, which I've actually seen happen, like five children born within a month, all is yours. Um, how do we, how do we, how do, how, how do we um, deal with that? He can't get three months for each child and end up with 15 months home or something, you know what I mean? So, so, so there are some legitimate concerns, but then there are also some crazy concerns. If one man and one child can't steal for more than three days, something is wrong with it. You understand? So, so that's some of the, the things that, that we man, once you really get going, um, will seek to address.